The 9mm cartridge produces the same energy whether it's in a 50 ounce competition gun or an 18 ounce concealed carry gun. Competition guns are super heavy, so the recoil doesn't take as much physical effort to manage, but concealed carry guns are small and light because, well, that's more convenient to actually carry, but they're not as fun to shoot. So how do you make a concealed carry gun that's easier to shoot and still easy to carry? That's where SIG came in with the P365XL Spectre Comp which is a ridiculously long name and I'm not gonna say it anymore, so I'm gonna call it the XLSC. So today we're gonna to look at the XLSC. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and this is the Sig Sauer P365 XLSC. That's right, we're not saying that name ever again in the video. I mean, you guys can barely sit around to the end of my videos. Imagine if I waste all your time saying P365 XL Spectre Comp every time I mention the gun in the video. This video would be like 45 minutes long. But the XLSC is significant because it's the latest gun from Sig Sauer Custom Works and it is trying something new. This is a 3.7 inch slide with a 3.1 inch barrel and there are two ports milled at the top of the slide that vent gas straight up, helping combat the effects of recoil on a very skinny and easy to carry and optimally sized, I might say, concealed carry gun. USA, Winchester USA ready, 124 plus P defensive loads. Curious how this is gonna handle it. It's a much, much stouter load, but even still, the snap was very manageable. So there's probably just two questions burning inside your mind is, does that compensator in the slide, the moving part of the gun, actually work, and why is he wearing an orange wristband? Well, one of the questions is easy. The wristband is because my 11-year-old gave it to me and told me I should wear it today, so I'm still wearing it. But long story short, yes, the compensator actually works on the gun. I'll show my work and support that conclusion, but you're gonna have to stick around to see how it works. So immediately some of you guys have run to the comment section as you are wont to do to say that compensators on nine millimeter pistols don't work, they don't produce enough gas. Well, the compensators actually do work. I've done videos on other compensators and this one is no exception. Even with range loads like target loads, this still will reduce perceived recoil, but more importantly, the gun will recover faster than it would if it didn't have a compensator to begin with. And who better than a snobby USPSA open shooter who competes with compensated pistols to tell you about that. So we'll have a section of the video talking about kind of the science on why a compensated pistol works and why you would want one. Some of the drawbacks that may come with that. But before we go any further with the video, I do need to request that you do subscribe to the channel. 75% of my views come from people who aren't subscribed to the channel. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year on YouTube, so I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe and help me reach that goal. Additionally, if you want more content over on on Patreon, I've made two posts about this pistol already, including one exclusive video that you can only get on Patreon. Two more bits of administration. Yes, Mr. YouTube Manual Reviewer, this is an unmodified gun exactly as it comes from the factory, despite having the word custom engraved on the slide. It's right there on the manufacturer's website. And besides, Clearly you know BG's second rule of thermodynamics that any plastic gun that costs more than a thousand dollars has to have gold bits on it. Every time I, come around, you see it bang, bang. I mean, you knew that, right? And secondly, Mr. FCC, this is a gun that was sent to me for testing and evaluation purposes. So now everybody's happy and we can dive in and talk about the gun. So let's get started talking about compensated pistols. A compensated pistol uses vents at the top and sometimes the side of the gun to vent gas that would otherwise impart energy onto the slide, creating recoil in more useful directions. So in this case, it's straight up. So the tendency for the gun to want to climb and recoil is combated by the force of the gas coming up through the top of the slide in this case. Usually compensators are threaded onto a barrel that protrudes past the length of the slide and would sit out here at the end of the pistol. But the way that SIG has gotten around that is they've just used a shorter barrel. Like this looks kind of crazy with this little 3.1 inch barrel. You can see the guide rod, which is a 365 XL length guide rod, sticks all the way out to here and the barrel would traditionally be kind of flush with the end of that guide rod, but it, you can see it's shorter. The result of that is you are gonna be giving up a little bit of velocity versus like a 3.7 inch barrel, but the good news is that there's plenty of ammunition that works just fine with short barrel guns. So let's talk about compensated pistols. With my competition pistol, I developed a load that has the optimum amount of gas to work my compensator while still 
making the projectile move as fast as I need it to for competition. Six Tower didn't have that luxury when they're designing a pistol like this because the ammo is so scarce these days, it needs to work with whatever trash is on the shelf at your local sporting goods store so you can go to the range and have a pistol that's gonna work. And Six Tower has done exactly that. Later in the video, we'll get into a little bit of reliability testing where I took eight different types of ammo and ran it through this bad boy. So Sig really had a job of work to do in trying to get this gun set up to run basically anything off the shelf and they have succeeded. So the end result of that is that the gun does work like a traditional compensator. Gas does come out of the top of the slide and the recoil is significantly less even compared to my P365XL that I use as my concealed carry gun. So let's talk about what makes the XLSC special versus the P365XL. So because it is a Spectre, it has a different slide. So the slide cuts are a little bit different. It's got obviously the compensator. It's got the blinged out gold barrel as we discussed. It's got the blinged out gold trigger. And more importantly than that is the LXG frame, which is a laser engraved frame. And the traction on the LXG frame is amazing. Additionally, it's gonna come with a lacquered challenge coin. And SIG has upped their challenge coin game. This is quite a good coin and it really speaks my love language. Well, not really. But the good news is the challenge coin represents you successfully sneaking a $1,300 pistol past your wife and staying married. So you can remember that now and forever. So that's really kind of the custom stuff about the gun. The case is the same as a traditional SIG and the trigger is roughly similar. The only other big feature is that you maintain your rear sight when you mount an optic because the slide is optics ready, but you don't sacrifice your rear sight like you do on the 365X and XL. So let's talk about the shooting experience of the gun. Now, I have previously reviewed the P365XL, which I think is an absolutely fantastic concealed carry gun. And it's to that point, it's the gun that I carry with me every single day. The size is really optimum to kind of manage uh, a fast draw with good shootability and still good comfort because the grip is so skinny and the gun is very lightweight. This does all of the same things as the 365 XL, except for it's much easier to shoot. And to underscore that, I got carried away when I was shooting this gun. I used more ammo and more time than I was supposed to when I was on the range, but the gun is very, very lively to shoot. Now, the compensator absolutely works. It absolutely works. I tried eight different kinds of ammunition. There was one NATO load, one 124 grain plus P load, two steel cased ammos, a bunch of different range ammo, a my own gamer loads that I used to compete in carry optics division, and a partridge in a pear tree. The gun had no problems running any of it. Now, with a compensated pistol, the lighter for caliber, faster projectiles will generally work the compensator harder, which means there is a bigger reduction in perceived recoil. And to that point, the 124 grain plus P was not mild. It was a stouter load for sure out of this gun. But when I compared it out of my regular P365XL, it was noticeably, noticeably more manageable out of this gun than it was the regular gun. So the boasts of a 20 to 30% recoil reduction from Zig Sauer, I would say are substantiated. With the heavy recoiling loads, you can absolutely appreciate the difference. For side-by-side -side video that, you can check out my Patreon video. But if you'd like to see videos comparing this gun to a 365X with a Parker Mountain Machine Compensator, that's why you need to subscribe to the channel. I got cool stuff like that coming. You don't wanna miss out on any cool stuff, do you? Of course not, nobody wants to miss cool stuff. So just like the regular 365 XL, this gun was a shooter for a concealed carry gun. The new traction on the grip really locks in on the front and back of the gun. I really prefer this laser etched grip to the point where I may end up getting another one of these grip modules for my other gun. And on the shooting impressions, I shot devils at 10 yards using the 115 NATO loads, which are pretty spicy. And what that drill is one sight picture, two trigger pulls, and you try and pull the trigger as fast as possible. You don't let the gun fully recover and take two aimed shots. The point is to see how the gun is settling back into position when you fire second shots. All alpha in a really good grouping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One outlier high. That's pretty exceptional for a little baby gun, giving it hell. That's amazing. That's with NATO loads, by the way. And that's not insignificant considering that 115 NATO is really snappy stuff and this pistol handles it like a champ. Like it's, it's easy to shoot, like really easy to shoot. I'm a decent pistol shooter, but this gun makes me look even better than I already am. Like 
I really like shooting the thing. You may have noticed I didn't mention the trigger pull on this gun as part of the Spectre Comp special features. The XLSC trigger is pretty much the same as my regular XL trigger. This one was pulling at five and three quarter pounds from the center of the trigger pad, which is nearly a pound heavier than what my already shot in and much higher round count 365 XL is, but the trigger quality is roughly similar and the trigger quality on this, if you're just in the gun store and you pull the trigger on the gun, you're gonna think, well, that's a little bit of a spongy trigger and kind of a rolling break. It does clean up as you shoot the gun where it is more predictable, but yeah, uh, with striker fired guns, it's a pretty rare one that is able to maintain that like glass rod breaking sort of break. So it is a little bit creepy and spongy, but I promise you, the way that the ergonomics are set up on the trigger, you're gonna be able to shoot this gun better than you would predict just based on dry firing it. The gun is near telepathic as far as making the holes show up where you think you're pointing the gun. About 17 yards with the iron sights. Everything's looking pretty good actually. Uh, that's probably, yeah, that is me. So that just one off to the side, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All 12 are there, so that uh, is an accurate little gun, even with the night sights. The sights contribute to that. It has the X-Ray 3 night sights that are on there, and those are uh, surprisingly easy to shoot accurately. I love the high-vis front. It is a three-dot sight, but I don't give them a problem for that because the rear dots are blacked out. So it presents very much like a high-vis front blacked out rear sight picture, which is the optimum sight picture if you're into performance shooting at all. We can argue about that in the comments, but that is the way it is. Three dot sights are dumb. So you put all of that together and I've said it in the other videos and if it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it again, but the, the sum is greater than the parts. Now you throw this compensated slide into the mix and it's, I, I don't want to shoot guns that aren't compensated that are this size. Like they're much nicer to shoot than a non-compensated pistol. And the downside of a compensated pistol is that they're usually much louder than their non-compensated brethren. This one is roughly the same. And I did try shooting the pistol off a of peck index. While it wasn't my favorite thing in the world to do, I could feel the gas going up past my face. I wouldn't do it all the time, but it, it didn't hurt me in any way. So it works just fine. And more important than that, is that day one out of the box, there is holster support for this because a lot of companies introduce these compensated pistols like the Hellcat RDP and there's no holsters available because it's a totally different mold. This is my Harry's holster P365 XL holster that I actually use every day and it absolutely works like a champion with the Spectre Comp. And the value of that can't be understated because really cool pistols that don't have holster support kind of die on the vine because you can't do what they're designed to do with. But it's not all upsides, as positive as I am on this gun. And guys, I am very positive on this pistol. I think it's absolutely fantastic. You heard me say in the beginning, it's a T&E gun, so that means I'm not allowed to say not nice things about products. And that's not necessarily true. I just do so at tremendous personal risk and burning relational capital. But the good news is that because I do like the gun so much, it's really not that big a deal. But there are some negatives that you should be aware of about this pistol and I'll share them with you. First and foremost, you may have noticed is the price tag with an MSRP of $12.99 in the first quarter of 2022. That is a whole lot of money for a very little pistol. But I will say there's legitimately nothing at all like it on the market as far as having an integral compensator like this style of design and we'll touch on that in the final comments. And probably the biggest negative about this pistol is that with this slide design is all that gas and fouling, like there's a lot of it that comes back into the slide. So if you're one of these guys who has to clean his pistol after every single time you shoot it, you're really gonna have a lot to do because these things get pretty nasty. Like I wiped off this barrel with a paper towel and it's still all kinds of grimy. That's pretty grimy, but Look how grimy the compensator is. Look at that. To that point, like the gold coating on the barrel, just with the test firing in the one range session that I took it to with a couple few hundred rounds, the coating is already starting to kind of wear off in the high places as it's fire fit together. But that's very common on these gold style barrels. In fact, all of the gold barrels that I've ever shot have done the, exactly what this is doing but they didn't get as grimy as this one. And the front of the slide, because uh, pardon me, but I'm pointing a gun at you, because the front of the slide is open, you can see into the front of the compensator that there's just a ton of stuff like 
carbon fouling, maybe little bits of the lead base, like lead will accumulate in your compensator because the base of the round nose jacket and bullets you shoot has lead. So there is lead coming out of your barrel effectively and it will deposit in your compensator. So it may need to get cleaned when you shoot it a lot, just like my open guns. But that's kind of the way of things. Like if you shoot a compensated pistol, they're a little bit dirty, they're a little bit louder, and sometimes you gotta clean the cop. Like, it's just the way it is. And that's gonna bring us to our final thoughts. And I have to say, and this is not like blowing smoke or butt kissing, like SIG has really done a lot in the past five or six years in moving the ball in modern pistol design and this is the most recent iteration of what that represents. If you think about the past five years, I won't say that they pioneered it, but they were the ones who pushed the concept into mainstream of the modular FCU chassis style pistol. They weren't the first, but they were the ones who really popularized it, similar to how Glock wasn't the first polymer pistol, but they were the ones that kind of popularized it. They were one of the first companies to actually mill slides to receive optics, not use an optics plate system, but actually mill the slide for direct installation of an optic. They were one of the first manufacturers to offer pistols for scale with optics mounted. They were the company that redesigned how these little magazines for these skinny nine pistols would be, uh, could get more rounds in them. Like traditionally, this would have been about an eight round magazine based on its length, but in this gun, it holds 12 rounds and it is a flush fit into the grip. So nothing extends down and you've got 12 plus one rounds on tap. I mean, that's not insignificant. Now, you put on this compensator design that has never been done before. Because this pistol is so expensive at $1,300, there probably aren't gonna be a ton of these made. And it's not often you pick up a pistol and be like, this might be a collector's item, especially not this day and age with like polymer style pistols. But man, I tell you what, like this very well could be one. The performance of the gun is absolutely undeniable to the point where I'm not going to carry my regular XL anymore. Uh, I've got the 365X Parker Mountain Machine Slide and I've got this gun to mess around with. It is an advantage if you're the kind of guy who's going to seek every advantage, like you will be able to shoot faster and more accurately with a compensated pistol. And when I say accurately, I don't mean like you'll be able to shoot a 10X target where if you couldn't otherwise. I mean that when you're shooting quickly, the gun is gonna return to zero better and it's not gonna wiggle around as much so you'll hold tighter groups. So the gun absolutely works as advertised and I really like it. So it's gonna be a tough decision when SIG calls up and says, hey, we need you to send that gun back. I'm gonna have to figure out whether uh, this gun is going back to them or not. Like so far, like as of today, still pretty high on the gun. So the answer is it's staying with me, but that may change with time, we'll see. I really like the XLSC. I think it's a good gun. I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments. So chime in in the comments below. Would you go for a pistol like this? What are your thoughts? What are your concerns? Would you use a compensated concealed carry pistol? Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.